Hi, okay, Larry Garrett here with my most famous hypnotist. So I'd like to introduce you to Diana Barrar. Diana Barrar and I have been doing hypnosis together over 50 years. And actually Diana, she's not gonna share with you what I'm gonna say, but she is, uh, she's one of the first women hypnotists to ever do hypnosis who's still alive today, doing it over 51 years. And, and she's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interview her. Hi, Diana. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Larry. So, you know, we, we did this instead of Diana just doing an introduction, who she is and what you're gonna go through as a client, it's me interviewing her as though I'm a client, saying to her, so tell us a little bit about you, Diana. Well, I've been in the field a long time. I'm considered a specialist in the field. And um, uh, what more is, I get the high success rate. There's not much That's else good. That's to good. That's good. So, so over the years, has your hypnosis stayed the same? Has it progressed? Has it changed? What's going on over the years for you? Oh, over the years it, ha it has changed. Uh, just like people change from day to day. How about you? Have you evolved in some way doing hypnosis different or improved upon? Or do you have a system that is excellent? I think I have a, a system that works and that's, that's the whole key. Everyone is different, so you're going to treat everyone a little mm -hmm. bit different. Yeah. When a person comes in, I, I like to answer most of the commonly asked questions. And one of the most common is, do you think I could be hypnotized? Anyone clinically that has a brain could be hypnotized. Yes. Stage hypnosis is a little different. That's for entertainment, and believe me, you get paid a lot more for that. So let me <laughs> ask you, so you did stage hypnosis for many years. Yes, I did. Yes. And uh, the curious question, because we meet a lot of hypnotists with different ideas, and I think a lot of hypnotists are going to be watching you right now as well as clients and potential clients. So I'm going to say, uh, so when you did stage hypnosis, what caused you to decide to sit behind the desk? Well, I, I love stage hypnosis because it's fun. Yeah, it's, you're entertaining, and you get paid more for entertaining. But I like helping people accomplish things mm -hmm. and that's why I sit behind the desk getting people to quit smoking uh, and mm -hmm. actually I'm not getting them what I'm doing is teaching them how to uh, I'm more mm -hmm. like a, an instructor sure you know I have a comment on that we spoke about before we started doing this video and that is it's not that you know so much more, it's just that as I used to joke, you've been around the block a few times for over 50 years, and each time you go around the block, you learn a little bit more, don't you? That's right. So I wonder how many people could attest to that. Yeah, and not only that, it, <coughs> what happens, each person's different, so you have to reflect onto that person and, and work with what's gonna work for them, because what works for you might not work for them. So you have to modify your inductions mm -hmm. I, and, and yeah. your uh, interaction with them. I like that word too, modify. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, I know you since 1970. A long time, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. I think Ooh. That, yeah. So long now time. if you think about that, I knew you when I had my first office. Yeah, how <laughs> you contributed to making that successful. All of a sudden, now we had two hypnotists on Gunnison instead of just one. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, there weren't many hypnotists then. So how did you start getting clients when you first started that office in 1970 and still doing stage hypnosis? Well, the stage hypnosis paid a lot of bills. <laughs> and, and that was fun. But working with people was, to me, more gratifying. So I started doing the one-to-one -one clients first. And I started getting a high success rate with, with people. That's what we want. And that's what you get. They, they refer. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I work, is on referrals from others mm -hmm. that are successful. And most of them, yeah. and I get yeah. books and books and books of letters from yes. people that... So then I go further and I say, you know, as, as I know you, we're talking 1970 uh, when we met, then all of a sudden there, there were a couple of women. Remember, Lee Schaefer was there. Yeah, but I don't uh, know if she yeah. was doing hypnosis. I don't either. I just know that there was another woman involved. Remember, a lot of hypnotists used to come there just as hobbies. 
Yes. Or not. They weren't they, hypnotists. Yeah. But I'm saying you were a hypnotherapist and you're board certified hypnotherapist full-time. that is uh, doing hypnosis as a full time practice. This is all you've done that I know of for over 40 years. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and teach. I, I taught And teach. Yeah, yes. teaching. Yeah, teaching's a big issue. Um, when a person comes in, though, I want to explain. Um, I ask them, of course, and, and here's some good pointers for people. If someone comes in to quit smoking, you ask them, have you had your last cigarette? If they say yes, you know you've got a, a success. There yeah, yeah. Because they, yeah. Had they just cigarette. told you. They just, yeah. They just told me. So I don't even have to hypnotize them because they smoked their last cigarette. But <laughs> the, the hypnosis is, yeah. uh, is what helps their unconscious mind work with the conscious mind. Uh-huh. And that's what I tell people too. Yeah. Uh, I'll work with the subconscious, you work with the conscious mind and yeah. follow through on this yeah. and you'll get 100% success. Yeah. Uh, that's the way to do it. With one working all by itself, yeah. consciously, people want to quit smoking. They're coming in because they want to quit smoking. So for, a per- yeah. so for a person just starting hypnosis, how uh, they would want to know how do you even manage to get clients in to see you all the time? Why? They can't get clients maybe once a week. And here you are working at two different offices, all week long, and how do you do that? Well, you, you get success. That's how yeah. you do it. Yeah. It's, it's by Can you put success into words for you? Giving them, if they come in to, to reduce stress, well, that's what you do for them. You mm-hmm. reduce the stress. Now, hypnosis is interesting. and Anyone and everyone is hypnotized all day long, off and on. But when you implant the suggestions worded correctly at the proper time, now you have a, a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. You don't bring a person down to sleep. Sometimes they come so close to it, they feel like they've fallen asleep, but they haven't. They're in a somnambulistic state, very close to sleep. Open the lines of communication and implant the suggestions. This is where my job comes in. I implant the suggestions worded correctly at the proper time, so when they're in their waking state, they're responding to these underlying suggestions. Basically, that's how it works. But I tell them, when you're in this state, your conscious mind is still real chattery, and you have thoughts like, I wonder if I'm doing this right, I hope this is working, I can hear everything she's saying, Uh, am I there yet? You're there. Uh, The point of it is, Tell your conscious mind to be quiet. During the hypnosis, you don't need your conscious mind. We're going for the subconscious. Consciously, yeah. you came in. You already know what you want. So I have a real interesting statement for everybody. I hope all of you know this is just a fun video that Diana and I are doing together as <laughs> two long-term friends. And uh, sometimes my knee shows in the picture, but I just thought I'd rather do that than miss out at what you're telling me because here's some important information that's going on. From time to time, you're sharing with us your success. And I don't think a lot of people know that you were the innovator of two voices and subliminal. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, see, she didn't tell you everything. Oh. Oh. Remember when you had this technique where you would have a voice that would say, so relax, and on top of it, so comfortable. How how did you do that? What was that about? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I, I did... Subliminal plus conscious. Uh-huh. Uh, subliminal uh-huh. is below the conscious range of hearing, yeah. visual, whatever. Yeah. But I did some research, and when I was teaching, I had these students 12 weeks, which was great, so I could work with them. Mm-hmm. And I, I would um, get classical music with, mm. with no feeling on it or okay. anything, and I would put uh, a, a, on a subliminal level, green, green, and, and I'd spell it and I'd say it again yeah, and again. Yeah. And then when I play, and I'd do all the colors, yeah. and I'd play it for my students, and an interesting yeah. thing is they were picking up the color green, Whoa. but they were also picking up trees, grass, money. Yes, everything with green. Everything is like green. Like your blazer that you have on right, right. now, yeah. And, huh? then, and then when they would yeah. open their eyes, green would stand out to them. And if it was yeah. yellow, the yellow would stand out. It was really interesting. Wonderful. I was able to do a lot of research and experimenting with my yeah. students. Yeah, I remember it was so unique. You know, it takes a lot to impress me because, you know, I 
what you do is what you do. Uh, you know, I, I seldom ever go and say, I wonder what that hypnotist is doing. Remember, we've talked about that. What do we care what they're doing? We know what we're doing. But many people don't know that you and I work side by side, uh, developing ideas and creating better ideas from what we originally were taught. So Diana Barrar and I were fortunate enough to be taught by a very prominent physician who did electronic hypnosis. And for six years, we spent, the three of us spent together learning these techniques. Yes. Now, Diana and I was saying, Luago, like artists now, off she went in her direction and she did really well because she's still here doing hypnosis. <laughs> off I went in my direction. Here we are 50 years later, still sitting in the same office working together. Yes. It's all those miles we've traveled. Oh, yeah. Yes. And here you are. Nobody, you know, I wanted everybody to know Diana Barrar as I know Diana Barrar. Because Diana Barrar is kind of humble. You know, she's got this little split Scorpio personality that says, I'm just me, and let me tell you how good I am. And, but, <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought that I'd get an interview of Diana Barrar as Larry Garrett knows her. No personal stuff, no, nope, just professional and friendship. But the real issue is, I'm just joking, is that Diana Barrar is, in my opinion, the greatest hypnotist I know. She's got methods that some of you don't even know exist, that I don't even know exist, because she's done her art, I've done my art. I've got techniques that are superior and so does Diana Barrar in her own way. So you want to learn something more about hypnosis and, and uh, success? You know, I see some of, uh, Diana, this is going to be a comment to you that I'm just expressing out loud. I see many hypnotists offering programs or classes or workshops, how to be a successful hypnotist. Yes? <laughs> yes. So I'm going to ask you an objective question. Who would know more how to be a, a successful hypnotist than the woman sitting in front of me that's been doing this for over 50 years and still in business without advertising? Who else? Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Well, this is like Saturday Night Live, people. We are just having fun. And it's almost like our days when we sit back and we start partying, we say, what do you think, Dan? I think so, too. <laughs> so here we are with one of the greatest hypnotists that I know. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. So you guys could all brag how great you are. You're going to be, <laughs> tell everybody how. And it's not about how good you are. It's about how you stay in business. And how do you see clients more than once? What is the longest term client that you could remember that you still see occasionally that you've known many years? Oh, no. I saw, when I first started in hypnosis 50 years ago, I saw a, a young man mm. who took a smoking, he did. And then 30 years later, I saw his son. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, that's Wow, that's proper. good, that's good. But that yeah. was just for smoking. I, yeah. I've seen one gentleman uh, and a, a couple of females. One f started in 1994 or two. Uh -huh. 94 to, and I still see him occasionally. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. This is what I wanted. Now, so I'm going to say to the viewer of this, so when you meet somebody like Diana Barrar, and objectively like myself, but we're talking about Diana right now, and she's doing hypnosis over 50 years, that I know of personally, I don't think, she, I, I say 40 years, I don't think that I've seen you with a regular job since the 70s. Oh, I have. Right, okay, yeah. good. See, so now hear that as you're viewing this and listening, since the 70s, she's done only hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And she sits here very classy today, very <laughs> elegant. We just finished a great lunch at an Indian restaurant. She's getting ready to see her afternoon clients. I'm getting ready to get my butt out of here. But we said, let's do a video of who Diana Barrar really is. This is, a, this is very significant. You know, this is like a personal private view of Diana Barrar. And you almost wonder, you know, you say, well, I've never met her. I've never, well, for a long time she hasn't gone to conferences, but now she's going to start going to conferences mm -hmm. again because conferences are good to go tell the other hypnotists how to do it, what to do, but this is just her. It's and good to share. It's, it's good, good to, to share. share. It's good yeah, to share. I'd, I'd say this, if you have an interest in something that very few hypnotists know, very few, you call Diana Barrar. Uh, hey, this this interview is becoming a commercial, but I'm doing I'm doing the interview. I <laughs> see. Can you see the humble look on her face? Look at the look. Like, what are you doing, Larry? Stop that stuff. Yeah, look at that gesture. Get away from me. So this is Diana Barrar. This is the woman that is a mystery woman. That's it. She's a mystery hypnotist. 
but ask any of her clients. They know who Diana Barrar is. Here in Chicago, or her full-time practice in Rockford, they'd know her in both cities. Um, it'd be nice for you to get to know Diana Barrar. So they're going to contact you, BarrarHypnosis.com. Is that right? Yeah. BarrarHypnosis.com. Yeah. Can't miss that. Diana Barrar, my long-term friend. In fact, I want to say that probably Diana is my first true friend after I got involved in hypnosis because, uh, wow, this is good. Now I'm going to talk about Larry. Now I'm going to talk about Diana. I'm going to talk <laughs> about who she has become and who she was is the same person. She has just evolved and glorified like fine wine. <laughs> I'm embarrassing her. Okay, I think that's a long enough interview. This is called a, an interview with Diana Barrar, the longest term woman hypnotist in hypnosis since 1970. Uh, and she's still doing full practice. So thank you, Diana, for such a wonderful interview. Thank you. It was great.